Hey Defenders, welcome back. So in the previous videos, we connected our Wazoo Manager to Greylog and we did so using FluentB. So our Wazoo Manager is outputting all of its alerts to our alerts.json file. And what we're doing with FluentB is collecting that file and sending it to Greylog. And we can figure that in part three of our series. So if you haven't seen that video yet, uh, make sure you do watch it before you progress with this one or you're going to be missing a lot of steps. So that's all working fine and good. However, if we look at how our messages are coming into Greylog, they're not parsed how we need them to be, right? So if I go on my Greylog web UI here, if I go into inputs and I select show received messages, here I'll be able to look at the messages that we're receiving from our Wazoo manager. So, and if I select one of these guys, we see that all we get is our message field, our source field, and our timestamp. We don't have this JSON block parsed out into its key value pairs. And that's a problem because now we can't build, it makes it much more difficult to build dashboards, uh, to configure our alerting, uh, some of the threat intel that we'll take advantage of later on. We need these fields parsed into their own unique fields so that we can actually take control of our data a little better. And that'll be a little more clear as we go through this video, because I don't want just to store this whole JSON block in our Wazoo indexer as this message field that just doesn't allow us to run searches very easily and is just a headache. And so what we need to do is use a gray log extractor to parse through these fields and match them with their key value pairs. And thankfully, by default, you know, Wazoo's alerts.json file is a JSON file. And Greylog has a JSON extractor actually already built in, which is really nice. So if I go ahead and select the contents of my message, I'll select create extractor. For the extractor type, I'll go ahead and select JSON. And there's multiple different extractor types depending on what your needs are and how the logs are coming in and how you're wanting to be able to parse and read through these logs. So, But for, for our use case, we're just going to select JSON. This is the easiest. It takes the less amount of work, thankfully. Uh, you'll see our message gets loaded up top here. And let's first select our item separator. Well, this is going to be a comma because after every JSON key value pair, right, we have a comma. So we have our true is equal to this number, then we have a comma, then we have our next key value pair, comma, next key value pair, so on and so forth. So we're going to leave that as a comma. Our separator is going to be an underscore. That's just how the field name will be written, which you'll that'll make more sense here in a sec. Our key separator is going to be a colon, not an equal sign, because our separator is here. So we have our colon, then we have our key, then we have our value. Same for timestamp, we have our colon, and then we have our value. So we're going to use that. Our key prefix, we're just gonna leave blank. Uh, key white space replacement, we're gonna leave blank. We'll say always try to extract because we know every, every log that we ingest with our Wazoo input that we spun up is going to be JSON. So we'll just go ahead and leave this to always try to extract. And let's go ahead and select try and let's see the magic happen. So as I select try here, now look at what's happening. Look at how all of our field names are being in their values are being extracted. So this is awesome. Now we can build dashboards off of, you know, maybe I want to match on this. I want to build a dashboard that matches on this source IP address. Well, now I can easily do so, or I want to create alerting that matches on this IP address. Now we can very easily do so. So now we're able to slice and dice our data and this magic is just happening right out of the box that that gray log is doing, which is really awesome. I am going to leave it as copy because we are getting a, you know, this is our message field that we're grabbing from and we can't remove this from gray log. Gray log is always going to include this. Looking at our key separator, remember the underscore here. So that's where this is coming into play here. So I have an underscore, underscore, underscore. Uh, if I wanted to change it up, it maybe like a plus sign. I could do a plus sign and you see that that gets put there. So whatever, whatever 
string you're looking to use, you can go ahead and implement. I just like to use the underscore uh, for my use cases. So I'm going to scroll down. We'll give it a title. I'll just call it. OK, cool. So I'll go ahead and select Create Extractor. And now our extractor is now created. So now if I go back into my messages. So now if I go back into my messages here, I'll select play. Let me generate an alert. I'll just generate an SSH login. So that has now uh, been logged and we see that now has just come through. And now if I select my log, we see that it's all parsed out. So now our key value pairs are actually being parsed out into their own unique fields. And it's as easy as that, which is really nice. And this, you know, it doesn't stop here. You can do this same approach for any firewall logs that you're looking to ingest or any other like third party services whose logs you're looking to ingest with Greylog. Greylog is super flexible in creating your own extractors. So it can pretty much fit any use case. Our key values are now being split up. But now let's go ahead and actually create our Wazoo Alerts Index. So in part one, I talked a little bit about how index the role of indexes when it comes to the Wazoo indexer. So I'm not going to re go over that in this video. So go ahead and check out part one if you are a little confused or, or haven't actually checked that part of the series out. So what I'm going to do is go into my system, select indices here, and we're going to create our Wazoo Alerts Index. Now, this will be the index where all of our Wazoo Alerts are stored into. And Greylog allows us to customize settings and it'll actually manage the index for us, which is really nice as well. So I'll go ahead and create my index set. I'll just call it Wazoo Alerts. Now let's create our index prefix. So this is going to be the index name that gets stored into our Wazoo indexer. And this will be the common name that we'll refer to when we plug Grafana into our Wazoo indexer, for example, or if we're using Kibana itself to make searches against our data, we'll need to select the index where the data resides. And so that will match to what this name is. I'll go ahead and say alert, Wazoo Alerts dash Sock Fortress. This, of course, can be any index name that you want, but they do have to be unique. So I couldn't create another index set that has the same name. You will then be able to select or set the number of shards, replicas, uh, number of segments, which again, refer back to part one. If you're a little lost on those examples, I'll just leave these to the default for now. What's also cool is that we can select, we can set our rotation configuration. So you can either do it by time. So this will tell Greylog, hey, once you hit one day, you want I want you to rotate to the next index. But I like to go ahead and set it to size. And let me just add a zero. So I will set one index to be a total size of 10 gigs. So what Greylog is going to do is it is going to, once my index hits 10 gigs, it's going to rotate to the next index up. So the first index that's going to be created is going to be wazoo alerts shock fortress underscore zero. So once I save this index off, Greylog is going to create this index for me. Now, once this index hits our 10 gig of size, Greylog will rotate to the next index, and that will be wazoo alerts shock fortress underscore one. And this process will keep going and keep going and keep going for as long as the index set uh, remains alive. So that is what this setting is allowing us to set here. And we can, we can, you can set it to whatever uh, use case fits your needs. Now for our retention configuration, this tells Greylog how long do I want you to retain my indexes. And this is important because this allows us to control, you know, how many, how much data a customer is able to send us. Maybe if they've only purchased 100 gigs worth of storage, well, we can easily control that in an automated fashion with Greylog. So we're able to set our retention policies for you know, whatever needs we have. And so for this example, I'll go ahead and say delete index after 10 indices. So what that means is that in total, I will be able to have 100 gigs of data because I have a rotation strategy of 10 gigs and I have a max of 10 indices. 
So 10 times 10 equals 100, so a total of 100 gigs of data. Now, once my 10th indice is reached, and we need to roll over to wazoo-alerts-shockfortress underscore 11, Greylog is going to automatically remove the earliest index within that 10 range block. So that's going to be our underscore zero index. So that's going to get removed to make room for our 11th. When our 11th index rotates to 12, then our first, our underscore one index is going to be deleted. And that cycle is just going to be constant until, unless you delete the, the index set. Do keep in mind that once these indices are deleted, that data is permanently, is permanently deleted unless you configured uh, snapshots within your Wazoo indexer, which we'll get into uh, later videos. So do keep that in mind, that that data will be permanently deleted. So I'll go ahead and select save. So once I hit select save, you see our Wazoo alerts index is here. And now Greylog is going to create an index within our Wazoo indexer for us. So if I select this guy, you'll see our created index. You'll see our underscore zero. And you'll also be able to see this on the Wazoo indexer end as well. So we have our index. Another really cool thing with Greylog is that we can configure streams. And streams will allow us to put rules around where our received logs are routed to. So for example, I want any law, any Wazoo alert log that I receive, I want to route it to this Wazoo dash alerts at Sock Fortress index. Because maybe I'm also receiving firewall logs and I don't want, I want to keep that data separated from each other. Maybe they have different re retention periods. Uh, maybe there's, you know, high, I'm, I want to store more per index size within my firewall logs than I do with my Wazoo alert. So it allows us to stay organized with our logs and kind of where they're routing to, which is a really awesome feature. So, and especially if you want to take on a multi-tenancy approach, streams are going to be very important because that's going to say, hey, I received a log from this customer. That res that log is going to now route to this index. And streams allow us to do so. So we'll go ahead and create a stream. And I'll just call it Wazoo Alerts. Also give it a description of Wazoo Alerts. Now my index set, we are now going to set it to our newly created index which is our Wazoo Alerts index. And I'm also going to select remove matches from all messages streams because I don't want to log this data twice. I want this data to only go to my Wazoo Alerts index, not my all messages index that you see here in the background. So I'll select save there. You notice by default it comes stopped. So now let's actually create our rule. So if I go back into system, I'm going to select my inputs and here, let's set a static field on our Wazoo events input. So if I select more actions and I select add static field, let me just say underscore log underscore type. And I'm going to do a field value of Wazoo. This, of course, can be whatever you want. This is fully customizable. For this demo, I'm just setting it to a log type and then uh, setting it to a field value of Wazoo. And you'll see that our static field gets added here. Now, what does this mean? This means that as logs are now written, as Greylog is now receiving logs, any log that hits our Wazoo events input, so our port 5555, Greylog is going to add this static field name. And this is important because now we can because this is always going to be a constant value that comes with every single one of our Wazoo alerts. So we can now build a stream rule to accurately route where these logs go. So if I go into search and I'll select just uh, the, one of the latest messages, hopefully this is a later one that has it. Yeah, you'll see my log. You see, we now have this new field log underscore type is equal to Wazoo. So that's going to come now with every log that I receive from my Wazoo input. So if I now go into streams, I'll select manage rules, I'll select add stream rule, and field is going to be log underscore type. So I'll select that guy. You see, you have a few options here. So you can like, this is also like super flexible and awesome because you can get really sophisticated and advanced with this. But for our use case, we just have an easy match exactly. And I'll go ahead and type out the value of Wazoo. It's not going to be inverted. Inverted would just mean saying that it is not 
it cannot match wazoo so it's just the inverse uh description you can put i'll say please subscribe we'll go ahead and save that off and now select done and now let's go ahead and start our stream so if you notice do i still have it up yeah so the latest messages that we saw were routing into our gray log underscore zero now with our new stream and new stream rule, it looks like we just got an alert. You'll see that Greylog is now routing these to our new Sock Fortress Wazoo Alerts index. So Greylog is now receiving this log and storing it within the right index within our Wazoo indexer. So Greylog is now able to parse through our logs and we can now route our logs to the appropriate backend indexes all with Greylog. And Greylog is going to handle and maintain this all for us under the hood, which is really awesome. And it doesn't stop here. Maybe I'm also bringing in Office 365 logs and I want to keep those separate from my Wazoo Alerts Index, which I do recommend. I don't recommend, I, I definitely don't recommend throwing all your logs into one index. Elastic themselves recommend not to get over a thousand unique key value pair key value field names so like this agent underscore ip is one agents agent underscore name is one these are all unique values so they recommend to keep it under a thousand just due to performance reasons you're going to get your best performance out of the wazoo indexer if you limit that because now when we run our search queries it's not having to look through th thousands of field names it has a set amount of field names that it searches on. And I also like to keep my data separated. So my Wazoo alerts will write to one index, my Office 365 will write to another, maybe my maybe I'm running Suricata and I want those logs to be stored in another index. So not only from a organizational and it, it's a little easier to to manage on our end, but it will also give us performance benefits by splitting these up. So I think that wraps it up for today's video. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one.